what an honor to be here and uh, to see such a wonderful group of uh, people who are interested um, in things psychological and I, I hope uh, and I also want to I believe things poetic and I'm not sure sometimes if there's a huge difference uh, between the two. Uh, before I start though, I want to acknowledge and congratulate uh, McKeel Clerk for beginning this uh, group in Salt Lake City and for uh, many of his uh, assistants, including Michael, Renee, Breeze, Evelyn, Alexa, and I know there's others that I didn't uh, meet tonight and so can't mention. Would you all join me in simply acknowledging them and their work? So just give me a second. All right, great. Thank you uh, uh, for, acknowledge, for acknowledging them. Uh, I'm interested, well, no, before I start, would you write down my email address, please? Because um, <clears throat> if there's not enough time uh, at the end, I'm going to make sure there's time to uh, have a question and answer period, or I don't even like that uh, term. Maybe you want to make an observation on uh, the talk, and so it doesn't have to be uh, interrogation 101. It can be observation 606, if you'd like. And uh, I've got to have the watch out here because uh, at 9 they lock the doors. Uh, airtight and uh, you might have to get on your cell phone to apologize for not making it into work tomorrow or home tonight. Uh, here's my email address, all lowercase, D as in Dennis, Slattery, S-L-A-T-T-E-R-Y, at pacifica.edu. I also want you to have that in the event that you become curious about Pacifica, I want you to feel comfortable in contacting me for information, uh, questions that you might have. I'd be more than happy to uh, answer them to further this uh, relationship with the Salt Lake uh, City Friends of Jung. Okay, got to watch the time and got to move here. I've straddled the fence for 40 years between two loves. Uh, the reality of the psyche and the aesthetics of poetry. And a number of years ago, finally made the decision that I did not have to make a decision on giving myself over to one or the other discipline and became very comfortable uh, as a result of that in staying on the fence so that I can see both yards, the yard of the poet and the yard of the depth and archetypal psychologist. And so what I present tonight, I hope, will be a witness uh, to that double vision, because I think they're both legitimate ways of seeing deeply and of knowing imaginally. And tonight when I uh, was with McKeel for a while, we got into a really good conversation that I almost feel like talking about rather than what I've written, but I don't dare. Uh, what is the, what is the, where are the, where are the distinctions and where are the similarities between the images that appear in our dreams 
and the images that appear in a poem that has the majestic aesthetics of Dante's Divine Comedy, for example. And I said to Mikhail, wouldn't that be a volume to work on to explore what part of the imagination offers up dream images? And is that the same or is it fundamentally different uh, imagination that gives us the images of poesis? Uh, that I find just very exciting. I believe that we are all poets in our dream life, and I believe that we are all dreamers in our poetic life. I think it is the nature of human beings to be poetic. You don't ever have to write a line of verse to be poetic. It's an attitude and it's a disposition, and I think it has everything to do with depth psychology. So that's where I want to play tonight, where I think the two world of images have their confluence is in the nature of analogy. Here is Jung, uh, and now I've, I've memorized this because I use it in class a lot. This is from uh, volume 9-2 of the collective works, and it's entitled Ion. That volume is entitled Ion, Researches into the Phenomenology of the Self. I think Jung puts the fundamental notion of his collective thought into a dependent adverbial clause. You want to write it down? This is, this is for meditation. Here's what Jung says. Since analogy formation is a law which to a large extent governs the psyche, comma, independent clause, which we don't need. Now take that in again. Since analogy formation is a law which to a large extent governs the psyche, for me, that is the heartbeat of depth psychology. Jung is pointing out that the psyche is fundamentally analogical. Poetry is fundamentally analogical. And so I think analogy is what our dream life is about. And I think our poetic life is constituted of. So that's by way of preamble. Now let me launch into, uh, and I promise not to keep my head down uh, as if the room were empty, uh, but I, used, I, I have to come in with a prepared document because I use it to reflect on the subject matter further. So let me begin. And I thought I should begin in the spirit of love and in the spirit of February by saying something about St. Valentine. Many of you may know who he was. Um, he may be a figment of the Catholic imagination, but you know, who cares? He tells a good story, and here it is. And I want to begin with him before I bring in Dante, both his first work, La Vida Nuova, which in Italian is The Good Life, and then I want to do two scenes from the Divine Comedy. So Valentine's Day is February 14th, and that's not an accident, but how it became February 14th is fascinating. So I did a little research to prepare this for you tonight. And some of you may know the story of St. Valentine, but here it is in a nutshell, uh, or in a uh, kiss, candy kiss. 